This is a video where we show you how to pick up and move blocks using sprites. And in this particular case, I'm using the mouse button. Once I get over a sprite, I click the mouse button and I can pick it up and move it. I can actually move groups of sprites as well as long as my player, which is the red dot, is in contact with them. Then I can get them all moved over to a part of the screen over here and do some sort of collection of sprites rather than simply running into them and having them disappear. In order to start with this, if you take a look at the sprite examples, the sprite collect box and moving sprites are good examples to look at before we go over this example because I only look at the things that have changed really from these two particular sprite examples. Okay, what has actually changed in these two different sprite examples? To begin with, the block class is unchanged. I have changed the player class, however, so let's go over the changes here. With the player class, this is a new class that I've created, although it is in the moving sprites list. It derives from block, so I get the same init method that I had right above. I'm not changing that. I can still use the same one. And I'm just adding things on to the block class that I had before. I'm creating a new attribute. This is the carry block list. This is all the blocks that I am currently carrying and moving around the screen. Right now, it's an empty list, open close square brackets. If you remember from the chapter on lists, that's an empty list. I've got a list of sprites that I'm carrying, which is empty, but when I click on sprites, then I will put those sprites in this list. The update method I've got right here is called every time I want to update a sprite, if you remember that from the other tutorial videos. And in this case, I get the current mouse position. And something new, I'm finding out the difference of where the mouse says our sprite should be and where our sprite actually is. I'm taking that particular difference and I'm storing it into two variables, diff x and diff y. Then, for every block that I am carrying, I am moving it by diff x and diff y. So I take in this four block in self carry block list, this is all the list of all the blocks I'm carrying. I do a loop like I've done before for every single block in that list. Of course if I don't have any blocks then this will be a very short loop. I won't loop at all. But for every block in that list I store it in a new variable called block and I take each one of those blocks rect x and rect y and move it by how much my original player sprite moved. And that's what actually causes those blocks to move. Then I go ahead and move the player right here. That is one of the main changes, and the only other main part of the change is to actually track when the mouse down and mouse up happens. That's down here. It's part of the event loop. Don't create a new event loop. Use the same event loop you had before. Right after the quit, indent it so that it's lined up. I've got an else if, if event type equals mouse button down. So we've clicked the mouse button. We want to pick up a sprite. I will find every sprite that we've collided with right here. Remember this does sprite collisions and I'm not getting rid of the sprites so I set that to false. I get a brand new list so I say the players attribute, I use the dot operator, the players carry block list is now this new list that I've just created in the line above of all the blocks that we've hit. If we haven't hit any blocks we still have a list but it's an empty list. When the mouse up happens, I switch the carry block list to an empty block list, thereby I am not holding any other sprites when I press the mouse button down. That's really all there is to it. Once you've got those two items in there, you can pick up and move sprites around the screen.